In his book, The Outrageous Idea of Christian Scholarship, George Masden takes on the issue of Christian thought, identity, and beliefs being forced out of upper-level academia and having those who may hold a Christian worldview on the outside looking in. Marsden does, this, does a thoughtful breakdown of the issue that modern academics have with Christian worldviews, and then goes chapter by chapter in his book and shows why it is academically dishonest for those who are claiming to be tolerant to do such an intolerant thing to the Christian worldview. Marsden makes interesting points and offers suggestions on how Christians can start to stop self-censoring themselves and again join the rest of academia and have their Christian views taken seriously. In his first chapter, Marsden explains why Christian perspectives are not welcome in the modern higher academic environment. Marsden points out early in this chapter that one of the issues is, that has shown itself is that America, u, American university culture is still shaped by a powerful impulse, impulse towards homogeny and uniformity. Like the universities of the original Protestants of, of, uh, original Protestants of, the, of the late 18th, 19th century, there is almost an irresistible zeal to integrate all Americans into a dominant cultural ideal. And right now, that dominant ideal in academia is one that focuses on race, class, and gender identity teaching objectives, which are often in conflict with Christian ideas. As Christians are seen as oppressors of marginalized people, sorry, I had to break up my liberal dictionary for some of these terms, at the time, Marsden does make a case as to why Christianity's influence was at one time, in a sense, purged from the university system as Christianity had long been part of a cultural establishment that controlled higher education. Until the late 19th century, traditional Christianity was often used to limit academic inquiry. At more conservatively, conservatively religious schools, traditional Christianity was part of a defensive posture and was sometimes taught in heavy-handed ways. Academic reformers thought against, fought against these restrictive religious establishments and eventually dismantled those that it had the greatest cultural influence. Yet, in the haste to pull out, pull out one religion, another one, of a different type, made its way into the university system, that is, of secular humanism. Throughout the next two chapters, Marsden demonstrates how Christian ideals are routinely removed, silenced, bullied, and disregarded as not needed or welcome in modern academics. Marsden notes that modern universities took shape in an era when many cultural leaders believed that science provided the most valuable standard for truth because it provided conclusions on which all fair-minded observ observers could agree. It was the ultimate non-sectarianism. People of all faiths, they would be free. They would free their minds from elementary prejudice. Would ought, would be compelled by scientific demonstration. Once the thought that scholarship in all areas, including those of the humanities, could be approached with a scientific view and analytical mind, then one could wash away uh, all of their preconceived worldview and prejudice and approach a subject with a detachment and discernment unburdened by one's faith. Yet this idea has proved has been disproved at each level by Marsden, who points out this has not happened in modern academics, and that those who advocate for this view are often the biggest violators by imposing their own judgments and belief systems on their studies. Yet expect religious people to remove theirs at a whim. Marsden then takes the next two chapters after these and explains the reasons why and the value that the Christian worldview has and why it needs a place at the table in modern academics. He notes that Christians need to have a view and not be shunned into silence simply based upon their beliefs, nor should they have to hide their faith or lock it out whenever thinking academically. Further, Marsden discussed how a Christian perspective could be used in order to give new insights and add to the academic inquiry and quality of thought. He notes that one needs to be careful when representing the views and ensuring that a scholar is not trying to represent a faith or its core adherents, but also not to hide and show that there were Christian influences upon their work. Marsden also warns not to force our work to become specific, specifically Christian academia, but to apply Christian thought to general academia too.
Throughout the book, Marsden makes a number of suggestions for Christian scholars to use to bring their ideas out of the dark and into the light. He states that we need to have a place at the academic table because, as he notes in closing, it is time to face the fact, long suppressed in the highest intellectual circles, that religiously diverse culture will be an intellectually richer culture. It is time to recognize that scholars and institutions who take the intellectual dimension of their faith seriously can be responsible and creative participants in the highest levels of academic discourse. Removing the rigid structure of postmodern academia and adding back in diversity of thought will only open new doors, not close them. This is the fear that the religious people re-enter and are allowed to share the views that others might be oppressed by their words. However, the exact opposite is happening. The religious are being oppressed by the irreligious. Marsden Books is a call for those with Christian-centric worldviews to boldly re-enter academia and start to bring out that new bring that new light back into the university. He wants to prove that Christian academia is not outrageous, but it is just as valid and just as useful as any other form of intellectual thought and discourse.